Join us now for Viewpoint, a series of programs produced in the studio of the Rosicrucian Order AMARC, an educational cultural organization located in San Jose, California. Explore with us the fields of science, philosophy, and the psychic nature of man through insights that reveal normally hidden truths. Our guest today is Mr. Ralph M. Lewis, Imperator of the Rosicrucian Order. Your host for Viewpoint is Miss Christy Knutson, staff member with the Rosicrucians. Hello, I'm Christy Knutson, your host for Viewpoint. I'm wondering just what kind of person you might be. Are you an open person, someone uh, tolerant of new ideas, other customs, different beliefs? Do you experience a, a sense of oneness, uh, of unity with nature and with mankind, a sense that seems to fill you with a need to help people, a need to be of service? If this does describe you, guess what? You are quite probably a mystic. If this comes as something of a surprise to you, it really shouldn't, because mystics are among the most creative, productive, sensitive, exciting, and vibrantly alive people on the face of the earth. Today we're going to be talking to Mr. Ralph M. Lewis, Executive Director of the ancient mystical order Rose Crucis, one of the world's most distinguished mystical fraternities. We're going to be talking about mystics and about their creative approach to life called mysticism. Welcome to Viewpoint, Mr. Lewis. Glad to be here. Good to have you with us. You know, mysticism is something that is talked about frequently today. It's the subject of a lot of conversations, and yet, quite frankly, I think it is one of the most misunderstood subjects on the face of the earth. So just to begin right at the beginning, I think the obvious question is, what is mysticism? Well, of course, there's varied exp explanations, but basically, we can say it in a few words. Uh, mysticism is the individual's immediate and direct communication and awareness of the absolute, we may term it God, or the cosmos. And uh, that explanation has been varied, however. And uh, you might say, well, isn't that the purpose of religion, too, to help the individual to become more directly aware of God or the divine, whatever term he wishes to use? No, true mysticism makes a distinction, and that is that there is no intermediary, that each individual himself can make the direct personal contact. It has, does not have to be through anyone else. And the basis for that is that all individuals would have in them the same divine essence, the same universal soul force, Therefore, they have as equal contact with the absolute as any so-called designated authority or intermediary. Well, then why are people so confused? Why are there so many different explanations of what mysticism is? If, if it is this contact with the one, this experience of unity, why is there so much confusion about it? Well, perhaps it's due to the fact that the individual experience is different with each individual. And he tries to then objectify it try to interpret and describe mysticism by his personal experience, which you can't do. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, the word emotion is one thing, but the experience of the emotion is another. And therefore, you can't say that emotions are just exactly what you experience as an emotional thing. And of course, then there is a number of people going into the subject of mysticism and confusing it with many other subjects, uh, confusing it with uh, metaphysics, which there is some relationship and then confusing it with the various religious aspects. Every religion uses mysticism to some extent. In other words, otherwise, the individual is intended through the means of the church or the means of the religion or the sect to come closer to the divine and to God. But uh, then they deviate because then they set down a specific rule and regulation by which the individual is supposed to have the mystical experience, whereas it is a, it is a personal thing personal communication. And I suppose what happens is when a person does have that experience, it is so real, it is so intense that it is true with a capital T for that person. And 
they experience that truth and then go out from there to feel that that is the truth for everyone. And from that dogma and, and, and religions, in a sense, might tend to develop. And, and what you seem to be saying, though, is that the difference between mysticism and religion is that ultimately with mysticism it's my personal experience. That's right. Mysticism, you might say, in this function, in this function, it has two divisions. First is the general spiritual viewpoint and aspect, the idealism is connected with it. And then we might say the mystical philosophy, the technology which is taught, the means by which the practical application and use of it can be had. There's two phases of it. Well, you know, Mr. Lewis, something I find very interesting is that talking today with a lot of people and also having read a number of books, uh, a number of your books on the subject, it seems that people quite often experience mysticism as children, almost by accident. And it's only as they grow older that they are led to studying philosophy or studying religion in an attempt to be able to consciously choose to experience this state. Would you say that mysticism is an instinct in man, or is it something that man has learned over the centuries? How and where th did mysticism begin? Well, you've got two different subjects there. First, I would say that innately, mysticism is a, a function, a, a, a faculty, if you want to put it that way. In other words, you spoke of children. Children have the fantasy, their parents say, of experiencing reality uh, of this not seems to be real to actually of the world today, figures and places and so on, because their subconscious is free. It's free. And they experience these things, which you might say is mystical if you mean that they experience another world, a reality beyond themselves. But then the parents say, well, no, that's not true. Now, this is this, this is it. The parents bring them down to objectivity. And then in school and everything, it's object, objectivity, objectivity. And later then, they have to go back to relying on the subjective aspect and try to realize that this was not all false. It was another part of realization on their part, which was taken away from them uh, when they were started to grow up in school. Children have playmates that they call their psychic playmates, and they have a psychic world that they see. And it's not, no, it's not all fantasy. It is also an experience which they interpreted in their child mind. And then they grow away from that. They're pulled away from, from school, and that's one part of it. Now, your, what was the base of your... The, 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 uh, well, that, okay, that, that's interesting, because the, this, this experience that children had, have led me to ask the question, is mysticism an instinct in man, or is it 